Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us pause and call to mind our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house. When you see the naked, cover him, and do not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you, The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away from the midst of you the yoke, the pointing of the finger, and speak in wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry, and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness, and your gloom, be as the noonday. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A light rises in the darkness for the upright. A light rises in the darkness for the upright. A light rises in the darkness for the upright. He is generous, merciful, and just. It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. A light rises in the darkness for the upright. He will never be moved, for ever shall the just be remembered. He has no fear of evil news. With a firm heart, he trusts in the Lord. A light rises in the darkness for the upright. With a steadfast heart, he will not fear. Open-handed, He gives to the poor. His justice stands firm forever. His might shall be exalted in glory. A light light rises rises in the darkness darkness for the upright. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brethren, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God in lofty words of wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in much fear and trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. He who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trodden underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When one person suffers from a delusion, it is called insanity. When many people suffer from a delusion, it is called religion. The dictionary supplied by Microsoft Word defines a delusion as a persistent fixed belief held in the face of strong contradictory evidence, especially as a symptom of a psychiatric order. Both of those quotes are from a book by Richard Dawkins called The God Delusion. Dawkins is the same man who says that anybody who forms a child in faith is being grossly irresponsible. Many people know that Richard Dawkins attacks theism or faith. And there are two ways that we can react to Dawkins. The first one is we can simply just say he's talking nonsense and push it aside, refusing to engage with what he says. Probably that's the reaction of most believers. Or I wonder if we should be reading another reaction, Dawkins' words, as a basis for reflection on the quality of our Christian life. You see, Dawkins displays hostility towards belief. And one of his arguments, besides the rational, is that if you look at the mess that the world is in, and you look at how often religion appears to be at the root of that mess, We are simply living a delusion. I don't think Dawkins' position is credible, but perhaps, maybe, it's important for us to engage with his position, asking ourselves, what is the quality of my belief? How do I live my belief? Are we Christians really credible. The rise of the Christian right in so many places in the world 
often tangled up with a vicious racism and xenophobia and homophobia and sexism seems to give credibility to Dawkins's position. In today's scripture text, Jesus uses two everyday things, two ordinary things, salt and light, to suggest what and how a credible believer lives. You know, salt was important in the ancient world. It was used to season food, but also to preserve food. They didn't have fridges in those days. In current South Africa, we don't have fridges most of the time either, but that's another story. It was used as a ritual sign in various of their ceremonies. But salt is useless by itself. It can only be useful when used in conjunction with something else. And Jesus invites us to be salt to the earth. Salt permeates a plate of food, for example, or a dish. And our belief, like salt, should permeate the whole of our lives. It is useless if it does not. If it is only simply kept in a box called faith or religion and does not permeate our personal or social or occupational lives, then our faith, like salt, is useless. Think about that image of light as well. Light is useless if it does not help us to see beyond ourselves. When we look around us, it is light that makes everything visible. We light up, so to speak, possibilities for ourselves and for others. And so, are we really salt and light? Do we allow our faith to permeate every part of our lives? Are we able to see beyond ourselves, to see God's world and everyone that God has created through the eyes of God? Now, you might ask yourself, how am I salt and light? That first reading from the prophet Isaiah tells us very succinctly how we are to be salt and light. If you want a to-do list of how to be salt and light, just go and read the prophet Isaiah again. And, not surprisingly, it's not what we like to hear. It's a very challenging part of Scripture. There's a powerful word right at the beginning of that selection that we read today, which we need to give attention to. Notice what the prophet says. He does not say, give to the poor, but rather share with the poor and the hungry. You know, we can, we can give. We can give many good things. And often, very good things are being done. But the invitation from Isaiah has a nuance to it. It's much more challenging than that. Do we give simply good things? Or rather, do we share? Because sometimes when we give, it's really about making ourselves feel good, making ourselves feel comfortable or satisfying our conscience that we have done something. The prophet Isaiah would ask us if we are sharing in the struggles of our world and the people in our society. He would ask us if we are sharing in the way that we work together to bring about justice and peace. Bemoaning it on social media is not sharing in the plight of those who suffer, for example. And Jesus ultimately, in that image of salt and light, is inviting us to a transformation, our transformation, so that the world can be transformed. He might say to us today, 
that the way we get a sense of our credibility as believers is to ask some of the uncomfortable questions that the prophet Isaiah points to. How do we share today with refugees, with the poor? How do we share in the struggle of gay people for their liberation? How do we share in the lives of the handicapped or the deaf or the blind? How do we share with people who suffer from HIV AIDS? Or do we hold the position that their bad behavior has brought this upon them? We are being asked to share in the struggles of our world. And therefore, I don't think we can simply just dismiss Dawkins completely, because Dawkins puts before us questions about our own credibility and the quality of our Christian lives. How much do you share with God's broken sons and daughters? What is the quality of your belief? And might Dawkins today point to something that you need to give attention to? Let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word, and now we are invited to make known our needs to our God. For Pope Francis, that, like Simon Peter, he may continue to be humble in recognizing his need for Christ, eager to follow the will of Christ, and powerful in proclaiming the message of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are called to be salt of the earth and light to the world, that they may cast their nets wide with courage and faith and bring in a catch of holiness, justice, and joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For leaders of nations and all in government, that they will use their authority wisely and well. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who continue to persecute the Church of God, that their hearts may be converted and their thoughts be turned to peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the unemployed and for those who are exploited in the workplace, that their skills and abilities may be recognized, valued, and rewarded. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who are sick or housebound, vulnerable or afraid, that they may know the healing touch of God's love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, 
We give you thanks that we can make our needs known to you and that you hear us through Christ Jesus, your Son and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Be God, Lord, we ask you to receive us empty sacrifice of faith, humble and contrite hearts. Wash away our iniquities. Cleanse us from all our sin. Let's pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Butti, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have Amen. mercy on us. Amen. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one cup, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.